Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for another adventure courtesy of Inkle Studios. It's part three of Steve Jackson's sorcery, The Seven Serpents. Count them. Seven of them. Now, in part two, we did die a fairly horrible death in the sewers, which is just like me. <laughs> so let's just begin the adventure. I don't want anything to do with part two anymore. It all went really wrong. Here we go. I should mention, incidentally, that Jessa of the Jessa channel is also having an epic adventure, so I would get over there and see how she does. We've got a little wager on that I will die horribly earlier than she does, which obviously I'm going to win. <laughs> of course I am, because the crown of kings has been stolen by the archmage and taken to his citadel in Mampang. And that just, well, that means death, doesn't it? You have been sent to get it back. And should you fail, the whole of the old world will surely fall, I can promise you. If there's any involvement from me, we're all going to fall. Drama! Your eight-day journey has so far taken you through the Shamantanti Hills and the treacherous city port of Kare, including its lovely sewers. You've faced monsters, traps, curses and certain death, it was certain. And it was at the hands of goblins or something. But now you stand on the edge of a desolate wilderness. Kakabad, the country of the Archmage himself. There is no time to lose or the risks are great. I'm going to say that the risks are great because that would be the truth. <laughs> the risks are great and that is why you travel alone. You must weigh every step and consider every danger. One false move could be the end of everything. <laughs> Any move could be the end of anything. Let's let's do it. I always get really excited with these. I think it's remembering what it used to be like as a kid playing these games. Towering mountains, dead plains, tangled forest, and the wide waters of Lake Ilkala. If you're not <laughs> if you've not been here before, do have some problems. Ilkala. Yeah. All lie between you and the Zaman Road. Out here, food will be scarce, oh no, and every resting place dangerous. There will be no villages, no inns and no aid. I've been ripped off. You have nothing but your sword, your gold and your courage. What, what do you mean, no food? <laughs> I don't like part three already. If there's going to be no food and no inns, there's no hope. There's no fun. It's not true. It's going to be great. It's Steve Jackson's sorcery. Here is the wonderful map, which I think is the best part of this. I love it. I love looking at the map. The stones of the old road disappear under a layer of dust and sand. At your back looms the Great Wall of Kare. Ahead there is nothing but an empty waste and the night. I shall ready my sword. To trust this wilderness would be a grievous error. You draw your sword from its scabbard. Now, do we want to look up at the stars or watch the shadows? Because it would seem obvious to watch the shadows, but if I look up at the stars, we might get a clue. Oh, you see, as you walk, you lift your eyes to the stars, wondering what fresh secrets they may hold, for the patterns written between the stars are the source of all magic, which exa was exactly my thought. Exactly my thought. But only too late do I realise that I should have been on my guard. And passing a low hillock, you are suddenly beset by a screaming creature wielding a vicious-looking sword. It is a marsh goblin, and there is no choice but to fight. Excellent, so I've started off by making grievous errors and getting into fights with goblins with vicious swords. Here we go, though. If you've not seen this game before, you're going to see the fighting mechanism. We decide on our attack power, and we're going to cut. Cut the goblin. Yeah! The marsh goblin grits together rancid yellow teeth. It seems determined to take your throat. But I got it. I got it. <laughs> but now I have to defend because I've got no attack power. Oh no, hang on a second. I lied. I misread that. Well, in that case, should we go for it again? Should we thrust this time? Thrust the goblin. Oh yeah. It's cursing me by one of its many soggy gods. <laughs> Right, this time I've only got enough for a side swipe. But 
I still got it, and it's nearly dead. Now, do I dare go for another side swipe? Or should I be defending to get more attack points? I'm going to defend. There we go. And this time, it's going to get cut. A moment later, you are leading the fight, keeping your weight steady. You slash across the goblin's skull. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. Let's search its body. Nope, there's nothing. Should we pry loose its teeth? Goblin teeth are valuable for casting spells, which, again, was exactly my thoughts on this. Got the teeth. We'll take its sword as well. There we go. Got a better sword now. Into the plains we go. can hear all the insects. I don't like that. Every spell is formed by aligning three stars and the sus spell will detect danger. We're going to have to remember that. Let's cast the spell. Everybody look away. <laughs> okay, we got an S. We got a U. We got another S. Here we go. You cast the spell, weaving the starlight into shape until a voice enters your mind and begins to speak. Its warning is clear and loud. You are being stalked. You are being hunted. Dun dun dun! Oh dear. Perhaps I should look around and find what's hunting me then. Oh, there it is! Oh no! It's a ferocious nighthawk! The talons are outstretched from my neck! Um, Roll aside. Duck! Attack with duck, or slash at the bird. Mm. I'm going to roll aside like the warrior that I am. Ha ha! The sharp claws sweep past my neck to rake the dirt. Is there a spell that will help me now against four of them? I reckon there probably is. Something involving fire. I'm thinking zap. It's also thinking zap. You cast the spell building up a charge of electrical energy around your palm. You turn and fire the bolt upwards into the Nighthawk's belly. The bird explodes in a cloud of feathers. <laughs> Exploding birds. What more do you expect? You step away from the fallen creature, but there is no time to rest. Two more of them shriek and start their dive. Now, the question is, do I want to start stand ready with my sword, start running, or cast another spell? I'm more than happy to cast another spell. Quite suddenly, the Nighthawks break formation. Something else is shimmering into visibility in their very midst. <gasps> Should I run forward? Should I move uphill? If I move uphill, I might get a better view of things. Let's move uphill. You move up onto higher ground, while behind you the strangest of battles ensues. The wing of one Nighthawk snaps like a broken branch. A second is ripped into feathers by invisible claws. The remaining birds scatter. There is nothing left but your mysterious saviour. I shall call out my thanks. It's a gold crest eagle from the king's own eyrie in Amaland. Wow. Really? Shall I stand back and see what it does? The creature, becoming slowly visible, seem, sees you have recognised it, and it tilts its beak. I shall bow. It opens its beak in reply, and something falls to the ground. It is a message cylinder. Whatever it contains must be of vital importance, or the king would not have risked revealing your location like this to deliver it. I'm very excited now. This is seriously exciting to get a message from kings. Look. We trust these tidings reach you in fair health. Bit more than fair, I think. But must warn you of impending peril. Your mission is discovered. The man Pang's eyes have spied our plan, and word is that it's on its way to the Dark Fortress. Too late, we discovered our unwelcome eavesdroppers, and news of your quest is being carried towards High Zarman by seven serpents, the Archmage's most trusted servants. He's got serpent servants. By now, they will have reached the backlands, and here they will Dis divide, sorry, misread that, divide, to complete their journey separately. If you are still able, seek them out, for they must stop to rest and eat. 
destroy the creatures before they reach their goal, else the Archmage will prepare a deadly welcome for you. That's not very good of him, is it? Not prepare some food? Find Shadrach the Hermit for advice, for naught moves through the backlands without his knowledge. Our hearts are with you, blimey. I've got to find some serpents and a dude called Shadrach. Where can I find the serpents? No. Oh. It's disappeared. Um, I shall destroy the message because I'm not stupid. I will not quickly forget what it said. I've got to find the serpents. How can I hope to locate them in such a wilderness, though? I'd say that my spirit will aid me. And my spirit just happens to be a fox. And as I support the foxes and we're playing away to Sunderland later, that's exactly what I'm going to need. It's a good, it's a good, good, good spirit. It's a good spirit. But I seem to be walking to the to a cliff. Um. Hmm. Look for a way down. Rest until daylight. Shall I rest as I'm only on 15 stamina? And I'll eat something as well. There we go. You eat a quantity of your bread and cheese and feel much better for it. Then you close your eyes and let your tiredness overtake you. The silence is loud in your ears. It sort of goes... <laughs> Slowly, you are understanding the true loneliness of this place. Oh, I want to go back to the town. I'm having visions now about a boy sitting on a, thrall of, a throne of skulls and swords, wearing a crown carved from solid bone. He's playing with mi model figurines of things. Boys with action figures. God, it really is the 80s, isn't it? I have changed to using the broadsword, which gives me plus one. Used one provision and found two new clues. Hey, I like this. With summing up of the day to dramatic music. Good. Okay, right. I've got to, uh, got to find a way over, haven't I? Ah, the drop is considerable. But leading away to the left is what appears to be a carved staircase. We'll have a look at the staircase then. They go downwards. The top step is covered with a curious bright yellow moss, meaning if I try to go down I'll probably slip. <laughs> the distant sound of flapping wings. I'm going to look back because I'm not stupid. There's four birds again. And somebody fighting them. Is he on the same quest as me? Look at the figure. Who is he? Oh, it's a woman. Okay. I'm going to call out then. Call to the woman. Um, oh, the whole scene is gone. There's something very strange about this place. Yes, there is. Let's gather the moss. <sighs> you grab a fistful of the moss. It's juicy and extremely pungent. Some mosses are good to eat and contain much nutrition. I know some mosses. I shall smell the moss. It smells like lemons and strong cheese and manure all ro rolled together. Mmm. But it might be poisonous. I shall stash it in my pack. Oh. It's quickly dried and crumbled to dust. Well, that sucks. Should have eaten it. Mind you, I probably would have died. And then possibly would have won my bet. <laughs> Sunlight sparkles in the distance. A lake, perhaps? I'm going to go down the steps. There we go. Halfway down. You clamber down the ancient stairs. It is painstaking work, as every step is about the height of your own body. Blimey. Then about halfway to the ground, you're forced to stop because the steps below have fallen to rubble. Oh no! I'll have a look at the remaining steps, and the spell of floating might be useful here. I can't remember how to do that. What's floating? I'm not sure. Where's my book? I'm not sure. <laughs> there we go. Come on, man. Floating. <laughs> Big walk. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> but none of this looks like floating to me. This 
This spell is to be used in perilous situations where information about the safest way of escape is desired. Okay. Mag. Oh. Um, we've got foul, which makes my caster's body as light as a feather. That sounds right. We shall foul it. Look away. <laughs> I got an F. There is an F. Oh no. But no A. Uh oh. I have a problem. I'm going to have to make a move, I think. I have to turn back. Or jump. Hmm. <gasps> I don't know what to do. I could pray to the fox. Is there any other spell? It did suggest floating, didn't it? There's a protective force field. But it's against intruders, I think. What if I made myself three times my normal size? I don't think that's what it wants me to do, though, is it? Army of goblins, could they catch me? try how? Can I try how? Oh, sorry, wrong thing. I'm going to play all that music. Um, oh no. Shall I jump? Look at me jumping. Here we go. This is me landing. <laughs> Ow. But I'm okay. I only lost a bit of stamina. For a moment, you're afraid that you might have broken your ankle, but you managed to stand. The foot of the cliff is punctured by little holes. Perhaps the warren of hill foxes. Or perhaps they can look after me. <laughs> look across the plain. I can see a stone tower. Look at the tower. It's listing to one side. I shall look at the cliff as it seems to make me look at the cliff a lot. I could cast a spell or move on. I can't think of any particular reason why I'd want to cast a spell. But is it making me do that so that I suss everything? Do I need to suss? I'm not getting any options to suss. I'm not even getting an S. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Ah, move on. This, then, is the plain of Badu Bak. An endless expanse of dust broken only by the thin outline of an ancient road. No one from Analand has been here. No one even knows what has happened to this place. I do, I do, I do. Everybody ran out of food. It once it was the Archmage's country, his fields and paddocks, and now it is too barren to even be a place of death. Good! That means I won't die then. Ooh! Options. The old road, into the plain, or follow the cliff. Hmm. I shall follow the old road, I think. From here, the path is uncertain. Hmm. The forest of Snatter is uncharted, and the Zanzunu peaks and Mampang seem remote. The forest is uncharted, and the Clatterback steppes, steppies, are seen to be home only to half under-evolved half-humans. Oh dear. No tracks climb the horns of, uh-oh, Ilk Lala. There's no bridge, there might not be a road at all. But I'm going to have to walk. There's no alternative. What have I done? Along the road or to the blasted tree. How could I not go to the blasted tree? Blasted tree. <laughs> you leave the road and walk across the desolate plain. The sun is hot now. After a while of walking, you see something to break the monotony. Too tall and thin for a skewer of rock or a building. You cannot place it until you get close. It is a single tree, leafless and dead, tilting from the desolate soil. Look at the tree. A rope ladder hangs from one of the higher branches. Oh, I'll climb the rope ladder. I need some excitement. Uh-oh. You scramble up the rope ladder to get a view across the lands, but the branches seem to be alive, twisting and bending as you climb. Trading standards. I thought this tree was dead. They're closing in around me like a tarp. Oh, cut them away, cut them away. 
I've got a decent sword, haven't I? You draw your broadsword and attempt to cut the branches away, but they move and bend out the reach of your sword. A moment later, another branch draws backwards around you and releases, knocking you painfully to the ground. For a moment, you hear a sound almo almost like a laugh. Who's there? Stranger. The voice is faint yet echoing. Stranger, stranger, stranger. Show yourself. There's no response. I'll look up at the tree again. Ooh. There's a man in the tree. Stranger. The tree face declares wistfully. You are lost. I dare you. I'm not lost. All who enter these places are lost. The face replies sadly. This is a land accursed. Every soul within is lost. Well, will you help me then, you silly thing? It says, I will seek the whereabouts. I'm going to have to keep that voice up now, aren't I? You seek the whereabouts of Shadrach Badu Bak. How do you know this? The tree is laughing at me. I, I imagine it goes, ha 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 ha. I know Shadrach very well. It replies, sorry. I have known him for a very long time. Why do I always end up sounding a bit like, um, what's his name? Russell. Can't remember his name. The chap who does the the news program. Oh, his surname's just disappeared out of my head. Been put off by the tree. <laughs> Where will I find him? Turn like a leaf in the morning, the face replies, sighing a deep sorrow of ash and autumn colour. <sighs> to the fishtail rock. He is expecting you. Oh, good. Let's walk on. Good. He's expecting me. Where did it say he was? <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, let's go north. You walk on across the plain until you meet the edge of an old road. I'm sure I can hear rattlesnakes. We've got some options. A tower. Oh, let's go to the tower. Oh, there was another option there that I didn't see. You reach the shadow of the tower you spotted while climbing down the cliff. Its sides are too smooth to be natural, and yet there are no stones or brickwork. It is like a gigantic game piece carved from a single block of stone. Behind the tower is what seems to be a crack in the ground. Let's look for a door. I'm having a door, Mayor. Oh, there's no door. From the very top, something metal glints in the sunshine. Look at the glint. Wasn't this place supposed to be barren? Look at the fissure. Oh dear, we don't want to go down there because it seems to plummet and plummet, falling to a misty bottom far below. Hmm, let's cast a spell. The spell of how? I've got an H. I've got an O. I've got a W. Ow. God, that's satisfying. Just want to cast magic all the time. You craft the magic, and a calm voice begins to speak to you. It informs you that there are no doors in or out of this tower, and the only way in is to climb it, but there are no handholds and no ladder. Well, thank you, Captain Obvious. What am I supposed to do, then? I shall toss something into the fissure, and I move on. South of here, the old road runs from west to east across the plain. You've still not found Shadrach the Hermit, and if he lives out here, he must have shelter of some kind. I bet he's in that tower. I bet he's in that tower. Is there some way in? Can I float? I didn't manage to float last time. Can I zap it? Can I make myself three times bigger than usual and have a quick look over the edge of the tower? Am I thinking in two laterally away here. This is really obvious. Defensive spells, fog, things requiring other stuff. Goodness me, there's a lot of spells. How have I not managed to use most of these? This is the most formidable spell in lore. Wow. Its effects are unknown. Crumbs. Do you remember that one? It's Z. Well, I can't help but think that I've missed something, but I'm going to go back to the road. Oh. You return to the road. 
The sun begins to dip, heading towards the horizon. From behind you, a voice says, Excuse me. You turn around to find the road deserted. There is no one in sight in any direction. Where are you? There's no reply. Stuff keeps talking to me. I really don't like it. Now where am I going to go? There's a forest there. Do I need to get to the forest? I need to get up here, don't I? This is where I'm going, I think. Where am I going there? Well, there's a town. I want to go to the town. <laughs> oh. I'll get a go across here. We can possibly get across this bridge, although I can see from here that part of it isn't a bridge anymore. You follow the old road. The sun is sinking and the sky is turning bruised purple. So is my body, I imagine. Let's look along the road. There was clearly once a way across there. Perhaps there is some kind of bridge. Well, this is the thing. I think there probably was. The wind roars along the crack in the ground in front of you like a mockery of a river. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking, is I might be able to walk across without needing a bridge. You creep to the edge of the crack to look down into it, and it seems to drop for miles. Damn it! Suddenly, you see movement at the edge of the fissure. Some kind of long spike reaches up over the edge, bends and hooks into the ground, followed closely by another. A long spike. Let's wait and watch. Oh, I might have guessed it'd be some sort of bug thing. Shall we fight it? I feel like fighting a bug thing. I'm going to go all in and charge the bug thing. Yeah! The creature is losing its scales, but it keeps coming. I'm going to have to defend. Ow! This time, I'll be a little bit more gentle and I shall just cut it. You'll not be defeated by an insect. Damn right I won't be defeated by an insect. I'm getting in there. Oh, so close. Come on, surely. Yeah. No. Well, this is bad. Oh, goodness for that. Wow. Well, that wasn't good. I've half deaded myself with that one. Right. A few birds swoop and wheel in the crevice. Oh, let's jump across. I'll probably be unable to make it, at least not without aid. Have I got a spell that lets me jump? Oh, I've just thought, actually. <laughs> I could probably do with actually looking at the spell book first, couldn't I? So do so we can listen to this music again. <laughs> oh, doors and suspecty things and splitting myself into six and... How? None of this is jump. I do have the full thing though, I suppose. I want to go... <laughs> Want to cast said. <laughs> uh, anyway, will it let me cast the fall thing? Do you think? I've got an F. No, that's clearly not right. I'm gonna have to move on then. Damn it! You follow an old road. Looks terribly familiar to the one we were following in a minute ago. The sun has almost set. Somewhere east of the Badu Back Ridge is named the Forest of Snatter. Perhaps the kind of place a serpent might hide. Is it giving me a huge cue there? <laughs> Go over to the forest, Jenny. <laughs> um, I need to find somewhere to... Well, shall I go back to the tower and sleep at the tower? Yeah, let's do that. Do I want to eat? Yeah, I suppose I do. Oh! Your dreams quickly become nightmares. There is a rope around your neck, growing tighter. The King of Analan stands before you, cursing you for your failure. You were sent for the crown, he curses, but instead you wandered the wilderness like a fool. Oh, I'll explain. I'll explain that I'm crap. 
I can't speak. I can't even find the words to breathe. I shall vow to do better. Honestly. Oh, hold on a second. You make a whispered vow through your crushed windpipe to do better. To serve better. But with the words comes the crushing sense that you cannot hope to succeed. You know it. And so does the king. And the hope around your neck both tightens and grows thicker. Until it is like an arm crooked at your throat. Your eyes flick open. A despair snake is wrapped around your throat, breathing its miserable breath into your eyes. What? I've found a snake. Shall I blast it? Zap the snake. Z for zap. A for zap. Nope. Damn it. I'll draw my sword then. Here we go. It's a snake. Cut the snake. Lovely. You know it to be an impossible enemy and you cannot hope to survive. Really? I don't believe that. I'm going to have a go at it again. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. We might have a problem here then. Fox? Can I call on the fox? Pray for healing. Thank you, fox. I have a nasty feeling that that ain't gonna help. Charge the snake. Cut the snake. Ah, I see this time I damaged the snake. It disappears into the shadows. It's clearly still there. Now you see the snake? I'm owning the snake, aren't I? It slinks away. But it's not doing, is it? Hmm. I shall defend to get some attack points back. But I'm going to keep going after it because I think I need to kill the thing. Maybe I don't need to kill the thing. Well, I'm going to kill it anyway. Just because I can. Ow. It hisses in the darkness, your only friend. This is weird. Well, I've just killed it. And I suddenly feel much, much better. So screw you, snake. Ooh, you gasp with relief. <coughs> God, after all that stuff with my throat. <coughs> yeah. As you clean your blade on the skin of the split snake, something falls out of its belly. It's a key. Look at the key. Aside from the snake blood running between the teeth, I'm sure snake blood's not really a word, it is a normal enough iron key. The snake must have swallowed it at some point and been stuck with it ever since. Okay. At the end of day two, at the southern tower base, we ran out of provisions, reached the pit of the backlands and found no new clues. We've got a key. You struggle to your feet and in the daylight you can see that the tower's surface is covered in thick grip weed. Grip weed as in you can grip it. Oh, I don't know. Let's go to the foothills. A strange whistling noise catches your attention. I'll have a look. The sound is coming from the other side of a large rock. Let's peer around the rock. Ooh. A strange sight greets your eyes. Whether a localised curse or a freak weather effect, you cannot tell. But hovering a short way above the ground is a swirling twist of air, trapped in a cove formed by the rock. Try to... I could try talking to the funnel. I'll just have a look at it, I think. Is the funnel alive? I'll try talking to the funnel. Oh, Foul thing, you begin. Are you indeed a creature? That's not very really nice, is it? Don't call it a foul thing. It might take me away. The whirlwind kicks up a short distance into the air as if leaping, and then settles back down again. Suddenly, from somewhere above you, you hear a voice. Ananda, I bring a message! I bring a message from Shadrach the Hermit result. What message? The fire serpent is following you. He's going to attack you while you sleep. Shadrach foresaw it. The boy has scaled halfway down the mountainside now and is just above the whirlpool in the rocks. When will this happen? When will this happen? 
Soon, at night. As he falls, you see him pulled through the air towards the whirlpool. Look out! Oh no! He's hit the whirlpool and he's vanished. Oh dear. I could approach the funnel, stab it with my sword. <laughs> I've got to stab it with my sword. Oh no! <laughs> I've lost my sword. <laughs> call for the boy, call for the boy. No, approach the funnel. Reach inside the funnel. <laughs> The force it exerts downward is quite strange, and then without warning it gets stronger. Oh God. The sound coming from the thing increases in pitch dramatically. I shall wait to see what happens. You could step back or cast a spell. Uh oh. You look to the heavens hoping to find a spell, but when you try to pull your hand back to begin casting you find you can't move it. What about my other hand? It is too strongly held in place above the whirlwind. This isn't like Skyrim, is it, where you can blast with both hands? A moment later, the force has tugged your arm down inside the whirlwind. From there, you cannot save yourself. You are trapped inside, and whatever happens there is so quick that you lose consciousness before you understand it. What's my fate? You have been trapped inside a deadly whirlwind. <laughs> no! <laughs> okay, right, that was a really, really bad idea. I knew that was going to happen. I didn't really. I was rather hoping that the whirlwind might get me and deliver me to the forest, but it didn't, because it was a stupid, nasty whirlwind. Oh dear. Right. Well. What can I say? That was my first go at part three of Steve Jackson's sorcery with an exclamation mark. And, um, death by whirlwind. I always seem to manage to find the best ways to die, don't I? And I killed a child as well. Sorry about that. Well, it was very good. As usual, I'll be back for a second go to see whether I can, indeed, get past the whirlwind. But really, what I should have done was come over here when I spent all my time faffing about and the king got very angry with me. So uh, next time, I shall try to get to the ridge and the forest of Snatter. Because what I was trying to do was go over here, which was a very bad thing. If you buy this game, remember, over there is a very bad thing. But we'll probably end up there anyway, won't we? Gameplay Jenny!